I've been working here all month in Japan at the Rugby World Cup. It's been an amazing experience inside the stadiums, commentating on the games, and I've also been filing TV reports from all over the country. Japanese embracing the World Cup. They've got a team that they're not just, you know, supporting to be polite. They've a team that they know have taken on some of the best in the world and have have come away with wins. New Zealand have named Jordi Barrett at fly half for their game against Namibia. Uh, also in the forwards, Brody Retallick has returned earlier than expected. And one other piece of news here from Japan is that the Argentina lock Thomas Lavanini has received a four match ban for his high tackle on the England captain Owen Farrell. Well, good evening from the back streets of Kobe. It's been a great week to be Irish in Japan. Joe Schmidt's team have rightly been heaped praise upon for their opening performance against Scotland. Yeah, back underway on Wednesday, France again against the USA, and we get to see the New Zealand All Blacks in action once more. They take on Canada. Well, the commentary actually calling the games live, that's the main reason that I'm here in Japan, and I've got to put most of my resources into that, the time to do the prep, certain equipments that you need for the commentaries, and the thought of having to bring extra heavy equipment is just a pain. However, managed to get this compact Mojo mobile journalism pack, which allows me to broadcast to a high quality standard, but crucially takes up hardly any space at all in my bag. Now this is all you need to make TV reports on the go. Total size is tiny. There's really no excuse to say you don't have enough room when you're traveling to take this. The pouch comes from Shure. You get it as part of a pack when you buy the MV88 Plus microphone. More on that in a moment. Um, but just the pouch itself, I love the feel of it. Uh, it feels like the material that's used to make wetsuits. Sure, give you the Manfrotto tripod that's included in the box. And again, you know, some mobile journalists will want a bigger tripod, and that's fine. Uh, it just depends what you need for any particular job. But this does get the job done in a basic level. An addition that I've added to the pack is the Luma Cube Light. Again, very small, which is important for me. But it does pack a, a decent punch for light. You're not going to be able to film a large group or from distance. But I've thrown out loads of lights for just piece to cameras, PTCs, uh, and so many of them are too dim. This does do the job. So you connect the mic straight into your phone and then you're away. Now there's many things I like about this microphone, but first and foremost, it's brilliant that it's got a headphone a mini jack socket. Now this allows me to use a proper earpiece. And we've all seen people doing live broadcasts, maybe on Skype or something, and they've got the earbuds dangling down and it just looks amateur. It just screams to me, this is not real TV. Uh, but when I've got the proper earpiece in, I could be live on air, I've got my mic cube over this uh, microphone, and it looks like this is a proper broadcast, this is a professional setup. I can hear the instructions from the producer in the studio, I can hear any questions that the presenter might put to me. The quality of the mic sound is excellent. Now for me, the idea of good quality sound is actually what separates what would otherwise be an amateur sort of shot on phone video into something that feels professional broadcast stuff. In terms of apps, this is the Shure Video app. Obviously, there's lots of different video recording apps out there. What I like about Shure's one is that it's got a very visible uh, audio monitor gauge. You can see the sound levels. Now, first of all, that means that you can be happy that the levels are not too high, they're not too low. Frankly, for me, at a, at a whole more rudimentary level, you can see that the sound is actually being recorded. Because when you're doing this, you're a bit of a one-man band. There is no worse feeling than, than shooting some video, checking it later, and finding out that the sound was only being picked up on the built-in microphone um, mic on the phone, and, and it's not being picked up by your external mic. With this app, you can clearly see which mic is connected and how the levels look. Now, frame rates are always an issue when you're trying to film for TV on a mobile phone. iPhones have it fixed in on 30 frames per second. That's fine if you're in America. In Europe on PAL, we need to get it to 25 frames per second. Obviously, there's different ways of doing this. Uh, for me, the very quick and easy way is to process your video through LumaFusion. This is a powerful app. It could do a lot of other things. This is one of its most basic functions. But for a top and tail, you line up what you want, you press export, you choose 25 frames per second. Uh, then importantly, don't save it to the camera roll. That'll just change it back into an Apple format. Export it directly, use a, a file sharing service. Again, there's lots available. I like Dropbox. You can use Box, WeTransfer, whatever. If you're working for a big organization, Organization. They might have media shuttle, something like that, which is even better again. But you, you get your video file, download link, and this can now be emailed to your TV station, and you're done. Now, I'm sure other people can come up with much fancier, more elaborate ways of doing this, but for me, it's about finding the system 
that works for you. This is a pared down, no fuss workflow. And when I hear people say, and I do this all the time, people say, oh, I'd love to do more Mojo, but I don't have to carry all the extra equipment around. Well, you look at the size of this, it's pretty much the size of a pencil case. That excuse just doesn't cut it anymore.